What's up, everybody? I got a really good one for you this time. I'm with my family, my sister, my brother-in-law, Ron, Rocket Ron, like you guys met on the car salute, and their two sons, you'll meet later, my nephews. Uh, we are going to go do about 350 miles on the East Coast. I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning. Uh, it's currently about noon. We're loading up the truck with all of our bikes and bikepacking gear. We're going to drive to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, about 16, 17 hours down the road. Um, from there, we're going to get a shuttle, another four hours to D.C. So we're going to go from D.C. to Cumberland, Maryland, and then from Cumberland, Maryland to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the CNO towpath and the, the Gap, which is the Great Allegheny Passage. And that is coming up right now. Right now, we're still in Northwest Arkansas getting ready. We're just finalizing our stuff in the back of the truck, and we will get out on the way. Not a whole lot to report right now since we haven't really done anything. But as you can see, we have a lot of stuff in the back of the truck. What's up, Ron? <laughs> Chaos. Chaos is, is right. We're trying to figure out how to shove 10 pounds of stuff into a five gallon bag. So we are about on our way. All right, it is 5.20 a.m. local time. We are in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we're going to be parking in this garage. Right now we're waiting for the shuttle guy to get here. He should be here in about a half an hour. And then we will load up our bikes, all of our gear, and take a shuttle ride to DC. That should take four, four and a half hours. So it's gonna be a long day. I've been up since, I've already been up 24 hours. We're gonna keep on going. You can see we got all of our stuff right there in the truck. And uh, it's, almost, it's almost game on time. We're getting really close. Okay. Finally made it to DC. It's 15 till noon. We got dumped off by Alex, our driver for the shuttle, which was Bill's car service. Uh, definitely a great, great guy. He did us a service. He stopped a couple times so we could use the restroom. We, uh, it was raining really bad, so he kind of like moseyed along for us and dumped us off under a tree where it's not. It's kind of drizzling right now. It's not really. I wouldn't say raining, but it's definitely sprinkling. You can see Van's getting his stuff ready. I got mine ready. Paul and Ike are getting it, their stuff ready. Rocket Ron's down here. He's just about, looks like he's about ready. And uh, yeah, we're about ready to go. What do you think? You excited yet? Excited. <laughs> so our plan is we're actually really, we're right in the downtown of, of DC. Instead of being dropped off at zero, mile marker zero, we're actually going to take a quick tour of uh, the monument area. This is. It's phenomenal. I know it's kind of crappy weather, but we really got lucky because like just it, just up to like 30 minutes ago, it was just crazy, crazy raining. It, it, uh, we're just really close to the, uh, you can't see it. The monument is just right there and you can't see it. And I got to get out of the street. Anyhow, we're going to get this thing going. As soon as everybody's ready, we're going to get on the trail. Actually, we're going to get, go down the, the, the mall, as they call it, with all the monuments. And uh, we're going to get the show on the road. All right, we're officially on it. DC. Got some directions by a very, very nice Secret Service lady in a, a little Secret Service cop car. Super, super nice and very attractive, I might add. And uh, yeah, we're in DC. This is awesome. There's the monument. Look at this group. Flaming Sword of Justice. Thank you. We were going to go check out all the sites, but it's kind of chilly. It's just spit rain, so we're just going to try to get onto the onto the trail. We've been rolling for over 24 hours, so. We got like at least 26 miles on the trail to do, so we're just kind of amped up about getting on the trail. We're on Virginia Street. This is pretty wicked.
Is this it? Looking for that bike route. Right. We are legit out of town now. Chesapeake and Ohio Canal National Historical Park. Woo! Awesome. Okay, so there's a trail that parallels this called the Crescent. It's paved. Uh, if you're doing the CNO, you need to not be on that trail. You need to get over on the, the actual towpath. The way you can tell is the CNO is a towpath, which means donkeys used to pull barges. So it needs to be right next to the water. So if you look at this one, it's right next to the water. This is a CNO. They got some kind of anything going on today. There's a lot of joggers, runners. The Crescent's over there somewhere. I can't even see it now. I'm glad we got on this one when we did because it is gone now. Block house number seven. So these are all for rent. You can rent these. They're, they're the original lock houses. They don't have any electricity and possibly no water. This doesn't look like anybody's been in a minute. All the shutters open up, I believe. So unfortunately we can't see in it. Yeah, it's got a canal that goes all the way through there. Picnic table. Pretty cool, the water goes all the way through. It basically turns this into an island in high water. There's several of these. I know there's at least 31, I think more. Really, really cool. I'm not sure how these things work. At one point they had like boats or barges and they pulled, I believe, coal or something here with and the, the donkeys or the mules or whatever would pull on the towpath and pull the boats through here, barges or whatever. But I don't know how it worked because I'm guessing these are, didn't used to be here and they just help holding it in place. And these locks would help get you up to elevation. So they and then they back flood this. The water up and the ship goes but I don't think these things were here. I think those are just here to help hold it in place. Yeah, pretty neat. Lock number seven, and you can see you would just cruise right through here with your whatever goods, probably coal. And right up through that way. Back then it was probably more active water so it wasn't all stagnated. Pretty neat stuff. We're going to see a lot of them on our trip. So we just came to a, a place where it says towpath closed. It's got detour signs. We got to go that way and then there's a detour sign that takes us that way. I don't remember reading about this. I don't know what's going on. I can see Ike just right through the trees. It looks like there's another bridge up there so I just thought I was ahead of everybody and decided to wait to make sure we all go in the same direction. So I'm gonna wait, Ron and Paula's 
uh, they're back there and I want to make sure that they know what's going on so we we're all a co cohesive unit uh, that's what team members do yep the detour I get, it looks like they're working on the towpath I just wanted to make sure we all went the same direction because I'm a nice guy like that okay so it comes up here right up next to the highway and goes next to the highway all the way to the next bend probably a quarter mile half mile something like that I can't see any farther than that probably farther than that but that's about as far as I can see all right well that was pretty crazy that little detour takes you up to the road and then abruptly it tells you to dismount and go down the reason it tells you to dismount is because there's a bunch of stairs they're like railroad ties with dirt and they're probably like four feet wide and then just a bunch of them I mean a bunch of them and of course me being the not smart guy that I am I just rode down them um, probably not the smartest thing I've ever done but I made it all in one piece my front bags were off a little bit I had to like tweak them back into place but Ron and Paula are dismounted and you can they're just now coming across that was definitely fun but rough those are some big stairs quite the elevation drop you couldn't ride it I did good for you you didn't see me no I don't believe you did you have it on video I didn't but th if you would have asked those people they would have saw me that sucks. so the canal has turned into like a really rocky affair super cool looking it's like and there for a minute it widened up really wide too totally different landscape all of a sudden now it's like we're in a like a canyon or something go ahead very very cool it's like instant day and night compared to what it was just a little while ago I'm on a big ass bridge and then look at that it's the biggest lock I've seen yet that is cool Thank you. There's one more behind me. Oh, there's the water again. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a big ass cut in the Potomac. The Potomac is on the other side of that. It's like an island or something, but man, that is just so cool. It's just so canyon esque and rugged, rocky. Pretty awesome. I, I, I had to stop to look at this. Everybody else kept going, but I was like, I'm blown away with the beauty of this. I feel like we're in the mountains, which I guess we are kind of in the Appalachians, but man, this is just so badass. Okay, we just had chaos on the trail. Rocket Ron lost his, his little brackets that hold his, his little brackets right there. They hold a, his, his, his whole rack with panniers and everything folded backwards and then the his tents and stuff like material. were like literally a foot away from that that there's a big puddle right there and we were looking for his little those little brackets well, you know, um, okay, to be those honest, with you, and then when, when it, like, a lady a lady and a man walked by with a kid uh, they, they a and they found one after i looked three times perfect, she's like oh there it is right there and, and that which is awesome was that they were supposed to and then that. we had all but give up ron had a bungee cord we macgyvered it and we're ready to get ready to leave and the bike patrol showed up we were talking to them about and he was like what's it look like what's it look like and i had been looking over here on this side because ron hit this bump over here there's a little bit of a bump right here and that's when all the chaos happened and it made it to right there and his panniers and his wreck rolled over backwards hit the ground and then his tent and stuff were like literally just three more inches than would have been in the water and that lady found the bracket right there or the whatever you want to call it well i've been looking i walked all the way like probably an eighth of a mile that way twice we had two sets of walkers looking like a man and a woman two two couples looking and then we the bike patrol showed up two of them and they were 
getting involved in talking about it and I just have I've been looking on this side because that first one is like on this side of the trail like you can see how wide this trail is the first one's right here so I thought the other one was maybe over there well I just happened to it was way over here and we were just about ready to leave and I just happened to find it and then on top of that that little blue bag fell down and was literally down there on the edge and that's swamp down there and that is a very steep hill and it took Ron holding my hand and me scaling the side of it really carefully to get to it. So this has been a, like a, a pretty semi-epic rescue operation. I'm super stoked that we haven't lost anything. Nothing got hurt or broken. Super stoked. But I'm only doing 10 today because because you know I had my accident about a year ago. How cool is it that we got bike patrol out here? I'm super stoked. These guys rock. So we only have about five more miles to go. But right now, on the right of me, I've got the towpath. And obviously, or I've got the canal. I'm on the towpath, which is obviously elevated. And right over there to the left, down a steep embankment, is the Potomac River. And I have a huge headwind. Like the headwind is just killing me on my time. It's brutal. My legs are pretty sore. You know, I've been awake who knows how long. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? It is 4.17. I can't do math, but you know, we're been awake for a day and a half at least. Uh, it's time for dinner. I gotta get to camp first. So, Ron's ahead of me. I have to keep stopping because my legs are just pretty spent. Uh, I haven't had a, a leg legitimate meal. I just been kind of been snacking all day because we've been in, the, in vehicles all day. I'm looking forward to some packet gourmet. Oh, we finally got here. Look what, I, look what we found. Man, that thing is just absolutely gorgeous. The color is just remarkable. It's fat. I mean, look at how big he is. We got one. Come here, buddy. Okay. This is me. Not the best setup, but it'll work. Got a couple of hammocks. I just ate some Pekka Gourmet fajita burrito. burrito. On a, I made three like 10 inch flour, real fluffy flour tortillas. It was really good. Had a couple spoonfuls of the leftovers in the bag. You know, it was definitely legit. Um, we did 27.4 miles today. It was extremely long since it started yesterday at 5 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. I don't know what time it is now, but like the sun's not even down yet, and I am getting ready to crawl into my hammock and call it a night. I am super beat, so I'll catch you in the morning. All right, we survived the first night. I had a, a friendly neighborhood chipmunk that was getting within like two feet of me and looking at me. It was super cute. Had one acorn on one side of his mouth. Uh, super, super cute. So this is horse bent. There he goes right there. See him? What's up, buddy? That dude was getting so close to me, like right next to me this morning when I had I was filling water up and Ron saw him and I didn't see him. And then he came back and was like, like I could have almost pet him. It was so close. It was so cool. Anyhow, this is horse, horse pen, hiker, biker campsite. Lots of trees. Uh, we used, there's three trees in a row. And then that one, we were able to get three hammocks in there. Paula hammocked over there like over there a little ways. Uh, we made it work, they got well water that is a pump that you have to treat, so we filtered it. We're just finalizing all of our gear, getting it ready to go. Looks like everybody's just about ready to go. And then we're gonna try to go to one called Horse Bend. It's about 50 miles, but along the way, there's a, a general store that's like right off the, get to a, like some kind of road or something, and it's like a half mile or maybe a quarter mile down the road. 
off the trail. Ike needs to get some stuff, so we're gonna get we're gonna stop in there and see what happens. Uh, other than that, I guess you'll see us when we're on the trail. Yeah, it'll warm up. I bet two miles more we're gonna be ready to peel peel our outer layer off. Okay, well, we just took a nice little break, and I had set myself up this morning with some a water, one water bottle full of uh, emergency. It's a it's got vitamin C, antioxidants, stuff like that. It's a supplement basically for water for hydration, and I'd already drank it. It's really good. It tastes like orange. I'm using two packets for one water bottle, small water bottle. Anyhow, I stopped so I can refill, do another another two packets, and uh, a little while ago. Along the trail, we've seen probably like eight or nine of these big, white, they look like pumpkins. And we saw a lady walk by with one, I'm like, man, I'd really like to know we were rolling, so I didn't ask her, but I wanted to know what it was. And she's right up here. It ended up being a puffball. She, she walked back by and we asked her, and she told us all about the puffball. So I'll try to find a puffball later and show you guys. It's really, really crazy. It looks like a pumpkin, but it's just a, I guess, type of fungus. Thanks for the info. You're welcome. I've noticed that these people here are really, really nice. Like everybody that we've met so far has just been so, so nice. It's a nice little, nice trail, nice community, cool people. They were just walking. They weren't even bikers, so it's like it's just a humanity thing. People are just being really cool. I guess you eat those puffballs. They're edible. You got to cook them. The inside are like bread, she said, when you open it up. I'll try to find you one and show you. And there's the Potomac. Looks like it's fairly shallow in that spot. Oh, another thing is, at that last place, we found a giant bottle of vodka. The people at camp there did the asshole thing and left a monster bottle, a glass bottle of vodka. So I'm packing it out, we're gonna throw it away. Can't leave it on the trail. It's ridiculous. Good morning. Some bike packers. Good morning. <clears throat> All right, just past mile marker fifty four. Um, we're camping at like around 70. I can't really remember what number it is. It's 70-ish. But Harpers Ferry's coming up, which means here pretty quick, we're going to be on the Appalachian Trail. Uh, the CNO towpath shares the CNO, or the CNO towpath shares the Appalachian Trail for a little while, which is super neat. So I'll make sure and get it. If I see where it starts, I'll get a picture of it for you guys. Um, now we're on kind of a road. It's the first time this has happened. It's like a gravel road. The canal's still right there, so I'm still pretty sure this is it. So Harper's Ferry's coming up in about six miles. I'm gonna pop in there. There's a scenic, scenic uh, area on the other side of the river. So we're gonna pop off of the CNO for just a short time. Uh, get over there, take some pictures. See what we can drum up. Uh, Harper's Ferry is just one of those cool Appalachian Trail towns that I've seen so many videos of that uh, I can't like not go check it out. So I'm not necessarily going to go see the, the town, but I am going to stop, go across a footbridge, and uh, look at that scenic, scenic uh, area. So we'll see about six miles, 45 minutes or so. All right. I am in Harper's Ferry. This is the Confluence River, the Potomac. This is where they meet. That's a huge bridge. I had to go up this crazy stairwell with my bike. It's just super wonderful. How's it going? Whoa! <laughs> it's Sparky! Check it out! And with the Justin Special. He's got this Justin Special. 
We were going to sit here and drink some beers and catch up. I haven't seen this guy in like a year or something. I don't even know how long, how long has it been. About a year and a month. A year and a month. Yeah. Holy shit, dude. If I'd have known you were coming, Welcome I would have bought a cake. <laughs> Welcome yeah, to Maryland. Maryland. And that's oh, sorry, for, West Virginia. This is West Virginia. I think that's Virginia. Virginia, Maryland, and that's Maryland Heights. It's right there. Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia. All right. Well, we're going to put it on pause for now, and I'm going to hang out. I still got 20 more miles after this, so probably only hang out for an hour or so. We'll see. Alright, well, both drank a couple beers. Checked out Harper's Ferry on. Not really, though. Just. Yeah, we, it's right there. It's right there. That's Harper's Ferry. <laughs> Pretty much. That, yeah. And uh, we got like a medieval, a medieval wedding going on right now. The crazy shit you see in Harper's Ferry. And uh, unfortunately, I've been here about an hour, but I gotta go. I wanna thank you, Justin, for showing up. Absolutely. You're a damn good friend. Be safe, be good, have fun, do what you do. I'll have fun. Come back. Justin was saying that that's Harper's, or Harper's Ferry. That's Maryland Heights. No, you can see Maryland? the cool little advertisement or something on the edge of the rock. I mean, whoever did that was a, a man, I'll tell you that. But, oh, look at this, look at the, it says Harper's Ferry on that tunnel. No, oh, it's 19... Is that, 21? can you walk through that? Like the bridge uh, doesn't go that far, does it? No. Okay, that's neat. So. But yeah, that's so that's Maryland Heights up there. I guess there's a hiking trail that goes up yep. to that sucker. So it's way over there, comes up. It's a, it's a good it's a good trail. Um, you been up it? Say what? Have you been it? Done yeah, it? Yeah, done it twice. Whoa, it's you're a mile and a half, two miles. You're a beast. But um, some kind of scenic overlook, I guess, because there's a is. ton of people up there. And uh, yeah, getting to it is actually kind of dangerous. But uh, yeah, so you got the confluence of the Shenandoah to your right, you the Potomac, and that turns into the Potomac. Which so the the con confluence is basically a tributary yeah. to the pon to the Potomac. Potomac. And there's all kinds of crazy pillars from old time bridges. There's these and there's some right over there. This town, I think, I don't remember when it was founded, but it's been around since the late 1700s, if not before. Major battles, uh, civil war battles were here, and plus or minus some other ones. The Antioch or whatever is just right up the yeah, road, and that yeah. was that was hardcore. Uh, some shit went down yeah. for the Civil War there. Uh, yeah, Anti uh, Antioch is over there. Uh, Lees, uh, Leesburg is over here. Um, Frederick is where I live currently. There's a bottle of a battle of Monocacy right there. A bottle of Monocacy? That was one of the last battle Men Monocacy. I had to learn how to say it. Battle of Monocacy, which is I think one of the last battles. Don't quote me on this, but it's the closest battle to DC. Um, during the Civil War. Okay. Monocacy? Monocacy. It's the uh, name of a river. Okay. Which is a cool battlefield to go um, hike around. Look who I finally found. Oh, weird. I better use two hands. I'm going to use two hands. Yeah, I'm going to go this way and follow that trail. Are you, are you walking it down or are you riding it? I'm riding it. Yeah. Dude, this is, a, this is a riding trail, not a walking trail. That's what I thought. I, I rode the stairs. Why not ride this? Oh, the screen turned black. All right, this is my spot for the night. Pretty nice little spot. Ron's set up over there. He saved me this little spot. It's pretty sweet. Uh, for those of you guys who don't follow my channel, this, I use a Dyneema tarp from Hammock Gear. I have a Dutchware Chameleon hammock, and it's hard to see, but I've got hammock gear under quilt and top quilt 40 degree and then i've got an over uh an under quilt protector also just for the heck of it and last night i stayed extremely warm this is horseshoe bend camp we've got a, the camp is over there we got some tents we got some new guys that just showed up but uh we're getting ready to go over there and eat the, the 
the boys, Ike and Van, both have a fire going. And uh, we're getting ready to start the nightlife, so I'll probably see you tomorrow. Horseshoe Bend Camp was a win. You can see it's very big. We had two different groups of people, uh, a group of two bikers set up camp and a group of four bikers. Van, this guy here, was set up over there in a tent. Ike, the guy over there, was over there on the other side of that stump. Paula was over by that big tree by where you can see Ron walking. And then Ron and I were both deeper into there, hammocking, because that's the only place to you can, you can hammock, really, in this area. Uh, it's really nice. There's a really steep bend where you have to go up and down, navigate. I was able to ride my bike down it, but <clears throat> there was no way to ride up it. I tried, and I, I made it up maybe... 10 feet before I had to give up and it's a little slicky from mud so mile marker a little it's a little past 79 um, we're gonna go to indigo neck today it's gonna be our longest ride I think it's about 50 what do we got about 58 today 59. 59 miles today so we got quite the trek we're getting a little bit of a late start but we're about ready to start it it's about nine o'clock and uh, that's the report we're all doing good Ike's putting a little lube on Paula's chain. She said she was making a little bit of noise. She's good now? You are the man, Ikeru. A big waterfall and pump house right over there or whatever it is pretty cool we're around mile marker 85 a little farther So back there was called an inlet lock. I've seen a couple of them at least. Inlet lock is where the Potomac has slack water, which is water that doesn't really have a current or very low current. What they did was the inlet lock lets the canal boats cross the towpath over to the Potomac, and then the mules would pull the canal boats from Riverside, which is super interesting. Uh, no need to build a canal if you've already got slack water on one side, so that was how they did it. Pretty interesting stuff. You see I can van up there. Got a down tree. I thought that only happened when you hiked. Guess not. I'm gonna have to walk my bike under this sucker. Pretty good sized tree. All right, check this out. This is a river. I don't know which one. And this is the towpath canal. It's basically a canal bridge to cross the river. <laughs> that is so cool. And over there, that building, they had a big area where it looks like they probably would have at one point pulled in and like unloaded or loaded coal or whatever. And then they'd come right through here. Pretty wild. 
some crazy shit over in on the CNO. Pretty cool little. I'm standing on a dam or something, or maybe a retaining wall. Look at that. That is pretty cool. We saw these guys pull up a fish. I don't know if you can see it or not, but he's got a fish on his stringer right now. We got this crazy kayaker getting ready to do something crazy. This is pretty cool. Non potable. Got these cool old fashioned pumps. One of those guys had a, oh, sorry. You're okay. Those guys had an electronic water purifier. It's, it's yeah, I don't trust those. That's UV. Yeah. It's the first time I've seen one in action. So, to filter our water, we're using a, a Sawyer, which is my favorite. We're, this is Ron's setup, and then a CNOC bag. The bigger of the, the bigger bag. Mine's smaller than that one. I don't say that very often, but it's true. That one's bigger. Ron's an overachiever. We're got a line of bottles there to fill up. <laughs> <laughs> we went at least a little bit too long on filling them up. So now we're reaping the benefit of having a bunch of bottles to fill. How are you feeling? A little bit better. Good. Where are we at? Like 10... I guess there's a thing right there. I thought, what is that? We're at 108 and a half at lock 48. Look at this crazy canal. Come through here and then down in through, there's like two or three of them in a row. Pretty wild stuff. We're at another aqueduct. This one's not quite the same because the, the water's been drained out of it. You can see there's a, looks like two locks or something parallel. Maybe this is like one of those places where they can, one canal boat can pass another one if it needed to. Let's see. It's supposed to just mount your bike when you go through here, but I'm just gonna, not dismounted, but I'm gonna look at it. Pretty wild. Cause this green down here is actually a bridge that goes over this, evidently probably a tributary. The one with the funny feather on his head. That black one's going to town. Oh, we just came across this. I'm not sure what it is. There's a placard over here. I'm going to read. Paul is figuring it out for me right now. Oh, I'm in the wrong gear. This is freaking cool. A what? Cement mill. Cement mill? Round top cement mill. Cement mill. Wow. That is nuts. Right on the canal. Super impressive. Good morning. I'm uh, just a little past mile marker 139. I stayed right between those trees. Uh, we had planned on staying here and then it got really a long day and then we backed it up one campsite, but then when we got there, there wasn't enough hanging trees. And I was like, I need good hanging trees. So I decided to go ahead and come on another six miles to here. Um, I haven't seen them with the crew yet. But it's 8.30, so I'm going to go ahead and push on. We're stopping in Cumberland tonight for a B&B, &B, so it's no big deal. I've got less mileage than them, but they usually catch up to me, so I'm just going to go ahead and pedal on. I'm sure I'll catch up to the boys. The boys are usually way ahead, uh, 5 to 10 miles ahead of everybody else, so they will find me sooner or later. So I'm going to push on. It's a really nice spot, super quiet, no guests, uh, water pump, 
toilet. Every every campsite's got a water pump and a toilet. It's freaking awesome. And most of them are, are good for hammocking. It's just the last one was just not. So anyhow, it's a new day. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what day. I think it might be Tuesday. And uh, I'll see you down the trail. Well, I'm taking my mid-morning break. This appears to be Lock House 59, the remnants. It was probably the basement. You can see there was a doorway to get in there. I don't know. It's gone now, unfortunately, but this, the foundation remains. I thought this might be a good time to tell you guys about my bike. Trek Marlin 6, originally a hardtail mountain bike. I put a solid surly front fork on it, a Krampus, I believe it's called. And then Von Traeger back rack, surly front rack, Thule, or I'm not sure that's how you pronounce it, but I call it Thule. 17 liter front panniers. I think those are 25s. I got an or Ortolib front bag. This is just a cheap, a cheap bag I bought from Walmart that's a cosmetics bag. And that holds my, I have two canisters of fuel, my cook kit, my spoon, a silky saw. I had a lint kit, but it's gone now. Um, I've got a, a front mount for, for my light. I only put it on there when I need it. I've got three waters. The two clear ones are water, and then I have a red one right there that I put uh, any kind of supplements in that one. That way I don't taint the taste of my water. I've got Montrager fenders that I had to, they don't actually fit very, they didn't fit out of the box, so I cut them off. Like this one, you can see I, I've got cut off right there so it fit because the rack gets in the way. So they're not quite perfect, but they work fine. Let's see, what else have I done to this bike? I use a grid lock for my phone. I have mountain bike pedals so the way i pack this thing is first off what i did was i put i put marks on them this is an r so this is the right side the other one's left that way when i have them off and under my under my tarp i can tell which one's which i did that for the front also you can see there's an r right there those actually say 13 i thought they were 17s i guess they're only 13. my bad so this one is all my shelter, my hammock, both my quilts, my under under quilt protector, my suspension, my tarp. Everything is inside this. It fits perfect, and it's not very heavy since you guys, I don't know if you follow me or not, but I started out as a backpacker, so I bought a bunch of lightweight stuff, so it all fits in one bag, which is awesome. This is my clothes bag. It says all my clothes. I, I, I sleep in, I have clothes just for sleeping in. I got three sets of of underwear for chamois for this trip, socks, blah, 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 all my clothes. This has my Helinox chair that I use and a tripod that I've not yet used hardly at all. I've already covered this one. It's my, my, basically, I call this my cook kit. This one, originally, this is all changed now because I've been rolling, but originally, this one had all my dinners and then it had some snacks, some tortillas. This one, had all my lunches and breakfasts and also snacks and then i'm carrying the group cable and then this this one this is my tool kit in case something goes wrong i got a tool kit here and this bag has like odds and ends and mainly my electronics now that i've ate enough food all my food has gone to this side and my electronics boxes have went down there giving me much more room up here to put my like my puffy jacket and stuff like that so um also the handlebars are different these are salsa deluxe handlebars with uh, i don't know what these are but those came with the bars i bought them for my nephew and they already had these on them and they're really nice to be able to change your hands up every once in a while and then here recently before this trip i bought a different pair of grips with the little the wrist uh platform thing gives you a little more support for your wrists but yeah that's my bike just kind of eating some beef jerky drinking some orange supplement and uh, getting ready for another day. This is going to be the end of the CNO. We're going to end at Cumberland today, where we have a B&B, &B, and we're going to get a nice bed to sleep in, and we are going to do some laundry, and I'm going to eat a real meal. Howdy. I've been pretty active for being in the middle of the week. I can't remember what day it is. Let's see. I'll tell you real quick. It is Tuesday, Tuesday, October 10th. And there's quite a few people. I mean, I've seen probably eight people already and it's only, what, 
It's 9.30 and I've already seen eight people. That's pretty cool. It's a great trail. Super, super, super cool. I think we're entering the pawpaw section. I saw the detour a second ago. Luckily, just a few weeks ago, they opened this thing up. It's been under construction uh, for falling rocks, like shoring it up or something. It's super muddy. It's just cool landscape. Apologize for the shaky camera work that sometimes I gotta use two hands. Very cool. This must be a landslide area. You wouldn't want to go off the edge here. Probably wouldn't be able to. You'd have a hard time retrieving your stuff. Wow, this is pretty cool. And if this is the tunnel up here, I guess I'm gonna slow my roll and wait for the clan. I'd like for us to all experience this together. This is really nice how they built this. You can see all the anchors that they've put in the walls to help hold that stuff together. Yep, this is the tunnel. Wow, pretty crazy. A lot of work went into this, a lot. So I just wanted to show you guys a little more of this pawpaw tunnel. It's just incredible. They dredged, they dredged the bottom. I guess there's probably a lot of debris because they've had a lot of falling rock issues. But look at the handrail, how they've routed all the square corners off. Even down here, no square edges, completely routed. Even on these uprights, routed edges. That's pretty cool that's something you don't normally see and these are some big big beams are using like those are significant size all this deck is just brand new like this is a big deck i guess it's a big deck because this is a big deal all the chain link with the anchors with the cables holding it all together like it's amazing it's amazing what they've done this thing's been under construction they had to close this down for uh, i've I'm not really sure, but I know it's been a couple of years at least because um, people had to take a detour. The old route was you had to go over the mountain and it was not easy with a bike is what I've heard. But there's all these to hold all that. It's like, I don't know if it's shale or what. This doesn't look like shale, but I saw some shale earlier, but, but you can see it's just anchored crazy, crazy. They've got big cement blockers holding these slabs of rock up. So it can't fall down and just tons of anchors. I don't know if you can see them, but there's just everywhere all the way up, even up there, like just tons of them. It's amazing. And look at the, how close they got into the rock. Like they didn't slack. These guys were doing some good woodworking. I'm super impressed. See, that kind of looks like shale right there. And you can see there's pretty good cracks on this all the way where big chunks have just fallen off. Like that used to be a chunk right there and it just laid on top of this and it's just gone. Super, super impressive. Huge anchors and I just can't get over this handrail. How clean it is. Probably the cleanest it'll be for years. Rounded off of the edges. You can kind of see some of that down there. They, it's level. It's flat. Man, this is just super, super gorgeous. I'm really happy. They, they just opened it like two weeks ago, like perfect timing for our trip. I wish I knew more about this tunnel, but I don't. I know it's old. The donkeys would, you know, they would walk through here, pulling the, the canal boats through here. There probably wasn't a handrail at the time. Probably no OSHA at that time. So, I'm just waiting for the gang to show up. We uh, 
I got a little early start since I went a little farther than them last night <clears throat> to get a good hang spot. I've went ahead and put my front light, light on and I'm ready to put my lights on and roll through here. I got my light on. Do you have a rear light? Yes, sir. I got them both. I got a GoPro going. Super smooth. How's it going, man? Woo! Almost. Yep. There we go. Are you getting cold yet? You getting cold yet? Yeah, it's pretty cold in here. Ready for that sunshine. We're at mile 166. Need to take a break. My back's getting a little sore. Uh, small my back gets sore. Every once in a while, I just have to kind of stand up and stretch it. Uh, it's 10 after 2. We have gone just under 27 miles for the day. We need 45 for the day. This is my final push to Cumberland. B&B um, tonight, bed, possibly a steak or some kind of really good protein food. I can't wait. The only time I planned on, on buying food was at Cumberland, and so far I haven't bought anything, so I'm on plan. Oh yeah! Hey! Turtles! Turtles! The turtles are out. So this is a not very glamorous section. I just passed 167. Other than the turtles, there's not a whole lot going on in this section. There's a bunch of turtles just right over there. Over there on those, pretty much every piece of wood that's sticking out of the water, they're up on them, centering themselves. And you can see that water is not moving one bit, like, at all. I just wanted to let you guys know that not everything is glamorous here. Uh, it's still awesome, and I, I love this trip, but it's not all just beautiful. And, you know, in, in some aspects, this green is beautiful. But... The reality is, it's kind of disgusting at the same time. It is what it is, though. I'm trucking on. I got about 15 more miles to Cumberland, and those two crazy guys that just went up, they're going to get there first. That's all right. I'm not in a really big hurry. Well, there's 177. We are really close to Cumberland. I think that's maybe seven more miles. I am getting a little bit tired. I knew I was going to get tired and I knew it was going to be hard, but it doesn't really sink in until you're in it. And I'm in it now and, you know, this is like day four of pedaling. My thighs are sore. I'm good for the first 20 miles and after that it starts turning into a little bit of a struggle. Uh, that's not bad, or it's not a good thing when you're doing 60 miles like yesterday. Luckily today is only 45 miles, so... Uh, in hindsight, I'm really glad I did the extra six yesterday. I know it sucked, but at the end of the day, I had good trees to hang from, and 
I'm um, six, oh, six, uh, six more miles that I don't have to do today, which is really all I care about. I can't wait to get to Cumberland, find some kind of alcohol to drink and some kind of, we're gonna wash our clothes and then when everybody gets together tonight, we're gonna go out and eat. Praying for a steak, man, praying for a steak. So with that, seven more miles that way, actually that way and then that way and then that way. One of the most important things on my bike, I forgot to tell you earlier when I was telling you about my bike, is my saddle. It's a Brooks C17. It's, car, uh, it's uh, vulcanized rubber, I believe, and weatherproof. That's why I got it. I was gonna get the leather one, the B17, because it's supposedly the best once it's broke in, but this one has been fabulous. There's no break-in period. You couple this with a good quality pair of chamois and your butt will thank you. I've not had any issues with my butt. You know, every once in a while they get a little sore and you just shift your weight around and it goes away. It's remarkable. You know, I've done over 40 today and my butt is fine. Anyhow, I don't know why I didn't tell you that earlier. I just completely spaced it off when I was telling you about my bike, but one of the most important upgrades I've done is that, that saddle right there. Totally worth it. It was 120 bucks, totally worth it. That is Cumberland. Cliff. Whew, 184. Hello. did it. This is the end of the CNO towpath. Pretty badass. I really enjoyed it. So, if you guys are want to see what the gap's like, follow them. The next video is the final adventure for this because I have to stop here because I'm actually got to get on the gap to get to the BMB. So, this is the end of this video. But if you want to watch more, follow me to the BMB in the next video, and we're gonna start the gap. I guess right now, do a couple miles, and then jump on the BMB. And then first thing in the morning, do about 24 miles uphill and start the, the, the Gap Trail, the Great Allegoni. But that's a different video. If not, I'm glad you watched. If you uh, like the video, 
hit that like button. Please comment if you like if you like anything about it. Just comment, and uh, let's get a discussion going. This is a really really great place, and I have a lot of stuff to discuss, and I would love to talk to people about it. So, thanks for watching.